It's time for the movie raid, and tonight's victim is actor and acting performance artist John Fleck that played in Waterworld, Falling Down, and months others. Hello. Hello, Mike. How are you? So what's going on? What's going on? I'm here in L.A. staring out a window at a gray sky waiting for the rain to fall. Other than that, I'm just working on a play right now, rehearse, rehearsing, and uh, I'm getting ready to go to New York to do my one-man show called Blacktop Highway, uh, which is a gothic horror screenplay that I narrate and play all the parts. And you also done a couple uh, musical numbers. Too. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I do musicals and dramas and stuff like that. You know, you also mentioned Waterworld. I mean, I presume you're more interested in in film than TV, huh? Both. Oh, both. Okay. Well, I also uh, did a lot of Star Trek. You know, there's only three actors who have done as many uh, uh, roles in all the Star Trek. TV series, and I'm one of the three, whatever that's worth, and uh, and I also played uh, Gecko, uh, the Lizard Man, on HBO's Carnival. So uh, yeah, for about I guess five years, all I did was play uh, freaks from uh, <laughs> with a lot of makeup. You know, six <laughs> hours in the makeup chair, I played non-human beings. But now I'm playing human beings again, so that's good. Which one do you prefer? Uh, I prefer to play a human being. I think that's a little more fun. <laughs> <laughs> But it usually doesn't pay as much as the non-human being, so... <laughs> <laughs> but over the course of performing on stage, what direction do you feel yourself more comfortable in between film and in the stage? I, I'm definitely a, a man of the, the stage and the theater. I, I mean, TV and film is great, you know, and the money is much better than you make on the stage. I, I, I've always liked to do both. And uh, I think TV and film is probably more for my ego, so to speak. It's like an ego job. Like, oh, especially living here in L.A., that values the film, uh, you know, TV medium so much more than stage. Stage is like the poor cousin living in the gutter here. So... I kind of developed that mentality that to be valid as an actor, I, I had to do film and TV. So, and, but I have straddled both, and I do more. I, at this point in my career in my life, I'm doing more stage and my own work I'm doing more than film TV. Now, as I get older here, I'm not working as much in the TV film world, you know? I mean, there's a little ageism going on here. I mean, I'm over 60 now, but the theater is still welcomes me so what can i say i that's where i have more power i have more control over that area of my my career that portion of the theater do you think it's kind of fading a little bit as time goes on when we got all these great new techniques of filling and of course you always have younger viewers younger actors emerging out film after film but do you think they're starting to forget about uh, all the way back to theater days yeah yeah well that, that's the old um you know thing around theater theater is for the older folks you know the the younger folks don't go to theater unless there's other young folks in the theater but uh hey you know but for an actor I, i'm sorry say what you will about you know you don't get to use your chops as much you know working on a film as you do carrying a, a live play i mean there's there's some some magic that happens on the on the live stage that doesn't happen in a, in a televised, you know, medium through, through that, that, you know, that, uh, that a performance can be enhanced through editing. You know, the, the, I, I just love the, you know, when shit falls apart on stage and you have to recover. I, cause that's, my work is always about things falling apart. And I, to me, perhaps, you know, outmoded and who cares anymore, but I don't know. There's a magic. I just got back from New York. I was there for six days and I saw like 10 shows in New York man still takes theater very seriously so thank god the control tends to be a little bit too tightening on on some aspects between the both because uh you want to get out there you want to do what what you can do and hopefully the outcome turns out well I, unless you're you know doing the editing uh you know yourself and immediate that that media you're out of control as an actor you know because somebody's creating your performance through editing and whereas on stage there ain't no controls except for what you're given there so what do you think self-expression comes from well i mean we all get into acting i mean i'm just talking from an acting point of view to to express ourselves but you know that's uh in an interpretive creative form i'm expressing someone else's writing when i started creating my performance art back in the 80s i i, I created my own opportunities by performing in you know punk clubs and you know and um uh, performance spaces like that kind of was a cathartic expression and of Myself, uh, you know, it was a form of freeing my soul on stage and sharing it with other people, I guess, and mirroring their journeys of self-expression. 
I don't know. I'm just blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, there are some people that have a different views uh, on their performance between their characters and media as far as acting and goes. Right. Well, um, I, I think depending on point of view, uh, I mean, all performance can be looked at it politically, but mine is creating passion and creating unpredictability uh, on a stage and like I said that's for what I do I think that's more important than anything I've ever done in film or TV because it's just so so live and so real and so dangerous I, I see I like to go into dangerous taboo territory that kind of might offend some people but uh, can also provoke kind of create interesting dialogue with other people uh, uh, if that makes any sense because you have you have the crowd there you have the reaction you don't exactly see that reaction when when you know the camera's rolling right there unless there's an audience right there you want to feel it you want to see it you want to be it yeah yeah and can definitely when you're in a live venue you know you definitely feel it back and forth from an audience and you know when you're working in film nobody can respond because because you can't hear them when you're doing film you don't want people to think that there's somebody an audience out there watching you and recording you so so it's just you know people get the illusion that it's just you and them you know behind the screen watching you on the screen you think uh, being unpredictable uh, you think that's also lacking in both forms oh Sure it is. I mean, that's what, don't you think that's what kind of, that we love about performances? Uh, you know, when we, on, on film or TV, as a, when, when we're watching something and it doesn't look rehearsed and it looks like it's just being thought of in the moment. I mean, yeah, I mean, God, if, it, if it's too predictable and it looks like it's been premeditated, it's boring. So that, that's what makes great actors, I think, uh, for me, and the great directors and filmmakers as well as theater makers, to, to give the illusion that it's all happening right now and that like it wasn't scripted yeah so i just hate things that look scripted or sound scripted yeah the, and like each genre um uh, the fantasy seems to be the most one with unpredictable and, and that's what i love about uh like in sci-fi as well it's out there not making sense in a, in a sensible way and i mean in the good way and that's that's the point of it. You're supposed to figure out what that is. It's supposed to get a general idea. I, I as an audience, like to, I, I like to work a little bit. I don't want everything spelled out for me. So, you know, guide me through the journey, but preach it and tell me I got to feel this way or I got to go there. Let, let, let me create my own story reflecting off what you, you're doing, if that makes sense. Again, it reflects off the viewer of, of what you're trying to tell. The same thing on stage, what you're trying to tell. And it, even if it may not make sense to some people, uh, the the message will get across. You just got to get there. Right. And, and you know, you got to have a clear vision as a creator, you know, what you're doing, and hopefully have some sense of how you want an audience to respond to it. Granted, you know, every audience member is different and will, may respond to different elements of what you're doing. And it's the year 2016. We're to the point where there's nothing right now, nothing but remakes again nothing but reboots again do you think influence this is going to affect the viewers in terms of influencing them in terms of what just remaking the same thing over and over and kind of putting in a different package but basically the same package with a different label so to speak yeah i see that happening on on in new york like on broadway i mean every other show is uh based on a film so and it's weird you know so they're they're doing a live presentation based on something that was like an illusory uh, uh media of film I, I don't know i think it's the corporatization you know the the corporate takeover uh of, of all these conglomerates that is kind of stifling originality and uh and People are swallowing it, and people, I, I think, in, in general, are, are losing some of their, their our imaginations because we're just eating this pablum of yesterday's reboots. They're just simply trying to, uh, well, what I call uh, cash in films or uh, and so forth, just making money off an existing title or franchise, and just keep milking it off dry to the point where fans of this film or franchise or stage play are, are going to dislike it or are going to hate it, even though they used to love it. Right. I mean, I was just listening to something on NPR about this latest um, a Superman versus Batman movie with um, a Ben Affleck. I forget the name of it, but uh, it's kind of like. Ooh, boy, they, they've run out of juice, and I think they, they polled people, and people are saying, eh, they're, they're not digging it anymore. It's just so, in a way, maybe they're, uh, the cannibalization of, of all this uh, prepackaged crap 
it, it's it's backfiring, perhaps, and maybe they'll cre- start creating some new uh, things for us. I don't know. Yeah, of course, it's, it's always hard as well. I mean, without a doubt. But having to go back five, ten years and pick a specific film and then remake it or whatever, and even if it doesn't even need it uh, in terms of story or anything like that, even if it got bad reviews, I mean, you're, you're intentionally running your company to the ground by making terrible remakes. And yet, <laughs> just make direct to DVD, maybe you get some of your money back. But, but aren't but aren't all these companies like making tons of money though, repackaging this crap and like like squeezing every last uh, penny out of out, out of this crap? I mean, I, I mean they are making money on on this repackaging because uh, people are buying it still, aren't they? At some point, yeah. I mean, you you watch it in the theaters, but then you're like, oh god, that's horrible. Why why do you even watch this? And I've been hearing a lot of bad things about it, and it's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have no desire to see it, that's for certain. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, bad word of mouth ain't good for, you know, the next sequel to it, so... Oh, no, we're going to make spin-offs instead. Oh, okay. Oh, right, exactly. I'll make spin-offs, right. <laughs> tons of spin-offs. There's tons... Now, right now, there's tons of superhero-related spin-offs and, and sequels and so forth. But if you look back, it's all about statistics. You see how well one superhero film became. Because at some point, you're going to get tired of Batman. You're going to get tired of Superman and Spider-Man and... And finally, we're going to... Hey, there's other characters in uh, these comic books, even if you're not a huge comic book fan. <laughs> well, let's try... Got l- Ant-Man. I was listening to the review on the new one out the uh, with uh, Robert Downey. What, what's this new one called? And they got... God, they got every Marvel character. Oh, yeah. They got Ant-Man. I, they I got Civil War. Ant-Man, but he's a new uh, spin-off character. Yeah, Civil War is the current one that's on the buzz as well. And I, I mean, okay, I'm I'm interested in seeing seeing these guys fight against each other or fight with each other or whatever they're supposed to do. And mm-hmm. and chances are we're going to see another spinoff of of the same thing, or they'll go back in time or some. I don't know. <laughs> But we will see. Uh, I was uh, yeah, always give the the film a chance at least. <laughs> uh, it looks interesting, but I, I'm curious of how how these characters are going to go. We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what happens. It's already uh, uh, pre-sold like two hundred twenty-seven million dollars worth of tickets, and hasn't really even opened yet. So it's going to make a billion. So yippee for for them, I guess. Huh? <laughs> hey, no video game. <laughs> Yeah, oh, uh, boy, Robert Downey Jr. He must more have more money than God now. He, yeah. <laughs> uh, I read that uh, he has more trailers than his own cast. <laughs> ah, I believe it. Okay. He's got like uh, apparently three additional trailers attached to his one big trailer compared to everybody else's. And this was on the Civil War set. <laughs> I hope he's happy. That's all I. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we consider uh, between stage and film, what do you consider as a challenge? Well, they're both challenges in their own way. I mean, you know, for me, being a stage, coming from a stage background, I was very operatic. You know, I used to have a four octave voice and I'd write these operas. So when I started doing TV and film, the challenge for me was to bring it down, to really keep it simple, and to. Uh, because that camera, man, it's a magnifying glass. And, you know, every gesture, every tick, every eye movement you see, and the closer it gets to you, you know, they keep coming in closer every take. It's just like, wow, you got to stay as much with as little effort as possible, so to speak. Um, the challenge for me on stage is, shit, is remembering all those words and all those lines and all the action you got to do, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, do you have any other related projects, or are you just going to do a whole slew of shows? Well, like I said, I, 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 I have this show called Blacktop Highway, and I've been workshopping it here in L.A., and I'm taking it to New York for, for three weeks in November. And uh, I, I think I think it's one of my best shows I've ever done. And uh, there's a lot of multimedia in it. I play all these different characters, and uh, it eventually becomes a film by the by the end of the, the piece. And uh, so I'd like to, you know, I'd like to travel with that a little bit. I also signed on to doing a play actually today um, here in L.A. Uh, by this uh, playwright David Greenspan, and, and this that's going to be a really challenge, a big challenge for me. Um, so uh, you know, I'm just taking it one day. To time yeah there you have it and there you have it and that is john fleck actor performance actor hey thanks mike